Welcome AP Calculus AB students, Mr. Record here, looking at our example 8 from topics 4.4 and 4.5. We're knee deep in 4.5, maybe chest deep in 4.5 at this point, talking about related rates. And we got a really special problem here. It's a rocket launch problem. So 3, 2, 1, blast off. Let's take a look at this guy. So the problem reads, we've got a rotating camera that is mounted 3,000 feet from a rocket's launching pad. The camera needs to pivot as the rocket is launched and needs to keep the rocket in focus. If the rocket is rising vertically at 800 feet per second, when it is 4,000 feet high, how fast is the camera to rocket distance changing? So you've got your picture or the beginnings of your picture. It's not so geometric at this point, but you got to think about the things that are important. So you're going to think about certainly the rocket's flight straight up in the air. You're going to notice this picture isn't drawn to scale either. Probably the distance the rocket's launching pad is from the camera. And if the camera has to keep track of the rocket the whole time, then we probably need this hypotenuse here. And we're going to go ahead and use some creative uh, 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 licensing here and, and consider the fact that this is a right triangle. And I know we're not looking directly at the camera's lens to the top of the rocket, but we'll use our imagination. We can call this rocket something. Uh, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to call it, say, Y. Uh, because it is a vertical distance. Uh, we do not need to label the ground because it is a constant of 3,000. And then you could label the, uh, the uh, certainly you want to label the um, distance uh, vertically here, or I'm sorry, diagonally here, and I might just call that Z. Right? I'm just picking some variables that match uh, the solution guide that I've provided for my students. So that's our picture. Uh, what are we given? Well, we are given the fact that the rocket is rising vertically at 800 feet per second. So we could call that dy over dt. And that is a positive 800. Thank goodness, because if it was a negative 800, this would be a very interesting launch. So we're going to go with our given there. And we need a find. And our find is all about the question. How fast is the camera to rocket distance changing? And that would be the rate of change of this length z, the hypotenuse of the triangle. And we want to find that dzdd, dzdt, specifically when the rocket is 4,000 feet above the ground. So that would make the y equal to 4,000. And we've essentially used all of the numbers in the problem. Now remember, this 3,000 has already been labeled. So we all, of course, need an equation. And I think I've alluded to the fact that this problem is really very, very in, intensely using the sides of a right triangle. And so we're certainly looking at the Pythagorean theorem here. y squared plus 3,000 squared would be equivalent to z squared. And with that, we're ready to take our derivative. So the derivative of y squared is 2y times dy dt. When we get to the 3,000 squared, no point in taking its uh, square because we're going to take the derivative and get 0 anyway. And so on the right side, we'd have 2z dz dt. At this point, you could do away with your twos, they would just cancel away. And at this point, y we know is 4,000. The dy dt is 800. The z, I don't think it was given in this problem. However, if you look over here to the right, we've got a situation where the bottom is a 3,000, the vertical height of the rocket is a 4,000, and so therefore, that makes the hypotenuse a 5,000. That's just an application of the most famous Pythagorean triple, 3, 4, 5, where it's all multiplied out by 1,000. And then you can find your dz dt pretty easily at this point. We're going to write this over here in the middle. dz dt would essentially be the 32 
with how many zeros? 8 times 4 is 32, but I've got 1, 2, 3, 5 zeros after that. So I think that that's uh, a big number, right? 5 zeros? Did I say 5 zeros? I did say 5 zeros. So 32 with 5 zeros. So that would be 3,200,000, I believe. And then we're going to divide that by 5,000. Now I know that we can do quite a bit of reducing here. In fact, I know we can cancel out three zeros for sure. And so we've got 3,200 over 5, uh, which I believe we could reduce that to 640. 40, I believe, is what that turns out to be. You can verify that on the calculator. But 640 times 5 would be 3,200. And the label, we're talking about the distance. It's just a linear distance. So we're talking feet over the time, which is seconds. So that's how far away the camera and the rocket are are. are well, I was going to say moving away from each other, but the camera's not moving. But the rocket moving up makes the distance from the camera change at that rate. So let's go on to part B, which is essentially the same problem. But now I want to know how fast is the angle of elevation of the camera changing at that same moment when that rocket or that shuttle here was 4,000 feet high. So we have this same exact picture, right? Whoops, I'm going to miss there, aren't I? Let's do a better job here. So we have the same right triangle. And I'm still going to use Y for this guy. But now I've got this angle measure theta. We like to use Greek letters for angle measures. So at this point, we have a slightly different um, find. Now, the given is still the same. But in this case, we're going to find the rate of change of the angle of elevation, which means we want d theta dt. And I'll go ahead and still state that we want that specifically when the y is equal to 4,000 again. Now, because we have a totally different aspect of what we're trying to find, a d theta dt, we're certainly going to have a different equation in our hands. And this equation is certainly going to involve trigonometry. It's going to be one of our trig ratios, SOHCAHTOA, sine, cosine, or tangent. Generally speaking, there's going to be one that probably works best, maybe one that will only work given the information that's been provided. I will say that in this particular problem, because we've already done part A, we know a lot about this hypotenuse Z, so we could probably use a trig ratio that involves the hypotenuse. But if we pretend that part A never happened and we just entered the problem here at part B, we're going to want to stick with the opposite leg Y and the adjacent leg 3000 because we have those labeled and there's lots of information about them in the problem. So that means tangent tangent theta is going to be our formula. And of course, tangent of theta is y divided by 3,000. Now we take the derivative of both sides of this equation. The derivative of tangent is secant squared of theta. We'll tack on our d theta dt there. And then that would be equivalent to the other side. The derivative of y over 3,000 is just the constant 1 over 3,000 times dy over dt. Now all we got to do is plug in some information for the secant squared of theta. And this d, uh, theta dt that we're trying to find will start to be by himself. And we already know that dy dt is our 800 from before. I didn't rewrite the given here in part B knowing that it was the same. Now maybe the secant squared might be bothering us a little bit. So the way that I think about the secant squared is, is like this. You've got a situation where at this moment we have 4,000 and 3,000. Right? We've launched the rocket. We're freezing time. We took our derivative and we've got our theta angle here. Now, if I want the secant of that angle, secant sometimes doesn't sit very well with me. I don't like working with secant. I'm going to be honest. I'm a high school teacher, master's degree in math, and I don't like working with secant. And I'll admit that. So 
we're just going to call the secant 1 over cosine. All right? And I don't mind working with cosine. Cosine is a lot easier to work with. And so if I take the cosine of this angle, then I take 3,000 over, uh-oh, I need this hypotenuse again, which is still going to be 5,000. And how about we do this? How about we reduce 3,000 over 5,000? Adjacent over hypotenuse would be 3 fifths. And if I go ahead and reciprocate that, then I can say that my secant of that angle was just 5 thirds. Now don't forget, over here in the equation, we're going to have to square that. So let's call it 25 ninths. The d theta dt is what we're trying to find here. And the dy dt that we had earlier, and I'll scroll up just in case you missed it, but the dy dt is going to be equivalent to 800. Now all the, that there is left to do is just a little bit of reducing and some dividing over. So d theta dt, well if I reduce the 800 over 3000, I could have 8 over 30, and if I reduce that further I'd get 4 over 15. And then if I multiply by the reciprocal, 9 over 25, I end up with a situation where I can continue to reduce uh, how about we take out a 3 out of both of those guys. And finally, I could say that we get 12 on top and 125 on bottom. And that's as reduced of an answer as I have. That would allow this pot potentially to match maybe a multiple choice answer that's out there. Now, we've got to talk about the units here. And whenever you are finding the rate of change of an angle, the units are a little funky because, you know, we're so quick to want to call everything degrees, degrees, angles are degrees, but we're not in that realm. And the reason is because we want something that's dimensionless. And a degree has a has a dimension or a symbol, I should say, a symbol of a, of a degree symbol, the little open circle. So we don't want that, so we use our good friend the radiance because the radiance doesn't have that symbol and it works very nicely as just this ratio and we do know that our time element is in terms of seconds so the actual answer is that this angle is increasing by a rate of 12 over 125 radians per second. Now I know you're probably thinking, well, that doesn't mean anything to me. If you were to type this into a calculator and multiply it by what 180 divided by pi, which is your conversions to, to degrees, it turns out to be about 5.5 degrees per second. And that starts to make sense because that angle is changing at that very slight amount. So there you go. There is your rocket problem using uh, a right triangle. And for the first time in the video series, we uh, actually got to talk a little bit about a trig uh, intervention into our formula. Uh, we only have just, a, a, I guess, a couple of more videos, three more videos, I guess, that will round out our related rate units here at Avon High School. We definitely want you to watch them. And uh, we thank you for joining, as always.